Okay, so to start chapter 11, we're going to talk about graphing radicals. And the first thing we need to ask is, well, what's a radical? Um, a radical is just this. You've seen this as a square root before. Um, this would be a radical root 2. Uh, you do, in the future, talk about cubed roots and fourth roots, etc. This is the radical. Anything underneath the radical, uh, we call the radicand. So anything inside is the radicand. And this little symbol here would represent that you're taking a radical. And Mikey thinks it's radical. Okay, so to graph um, radicals, you want to pick values of x that give you good answers. So what that means is if you wanted to graph y equals the square root of x, if you plugged in 3 for x, you're going to get a decimal 1.7 something. It'll be an irrational number, that's not a good answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick values of x that give us integers when we take the square root of them. So for something like this, it's not too difficult. We know that 0 is a perfect square. When you take the square root of 0, you just get 0. 1 would be another perfect square, because so the square root of 1 is just 1. Okay, the next perfect square would be 4. The square root of 4 is just 2. You can hopefully see a little pattern. The next number we'd plug in would be 9. And then our y value, when we take the square root of 9, we get 3. And that should be enough for us to get a good idea of what our graph looks like. So we'll have point zero zero. we have point one one, point four two, and 9. So our graph looks something like this. Uh, now we need to ask the question, what if we plugged in a negative number? Why can't we extend this line all the way down here? Because it feels like we should. But here we run into an issue of this being defined. If we take the square root of negative 1, can't take a square root of a negative number that gives you an undefined answer. So this is actually our starting point. This 0, 0 is our starting point. We won't have any bit of our line to the left or underneath this starting point, or initial point, sometimes this is called. So the domain, remember the domain is the possible x values that give us defined answers, so that would mean nothing negative. So how we write x is nothing negative is we just say x is greater than or equal to 0. The range, recall, is the set of all possible y values. So notice that we're never getting below 0. So in a very similar way, we say the range y is greater than or equal to 0. y is going to be at 0 or anything greater than that. If we extend this line further to the right, it would keep going up very gradually. So that's the general process, but it can get a little bit more difficult. Let's see how this works. We want to think about a good starting point, and we want to use values of x that give us a perfect square underneath. Well, perfect squares would be 0, 1, 4, 9, which we just saw. But we can't just plug 0 in for x, because then we'd have 0 minus 4 would be negative 4, then we'd have a negative answer. We want to pick a value of x that gives us a 0 in our radicand. Well, that answer would be 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So then for our y value, 4 minus 4 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, 0 plus 6 is just 6. Okay, what's the next x value to plug in? What would give us a 1 underneath our square root? The answer would be 5. When we plug 5 in, we have 5 minus 4, which is 1. The square root of 1 is just 1. 1 plus, seven, one plus 6 excuse me, is 7. Okay, let's keep going. What would we need to plug in for x to get a 4 underneath the square root? Remember, we're going for perfect squares. We went 1, or 0, 1, and now we're looking for 4. Well, we could plug in 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 6 is 8. So now let's plot this. 4, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's our starting point. 
then we have 5, 7, and then we have 8, 8. So our graph is going to start here and curve up like that. Looking now at our domain, what values of x are possible? Well, our lowest possible value of x is 4, so x has to be greater than or equal to 4. Similarly, our range, we never get below 6, so y has to be greater than or equal to 6. So here we have the general form of our uh, radical equations. y equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k. And if you ever have a square root uh, equation, you'll always know that hk is the starting point. Notice 4, 6 was our starting point, h in this case was 4, k in this case was 6. So it's a nice little shortcut for us. And then just to note that h is being subtracted, um, so then you take h plus any perfect square to find some easy points, which is effectively what we did here. So get just a couple more quickly. Now that we have this little trick, where hk is our starting point, graphing this isn't too bad. Remember, x plus 6 would translate to a negative 6 as our starting point, because the general form is minus h. Here we're adding something, so we're just going to take the opposite, subtract the opposite, would be the same as adding. So negative 6 and 3 is our starting point. Okay, now we just go up from there. We plug in negative 5 to give us 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 3 is just 1. Next perfect square would be 4, so we can plug in negative 2. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 then is negative 1. And now we can probably get a decent idea for our graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then up 3. Then we have negative 5, 1. Then we have negative 2, negative 1. Something like that. Our domain, our x values are only greater than negative 6. So x is greater than or equal to negative 6. Our range, y is only less than 3. So y is less than or equal to 3. We're below 3. Okay, so this is just kind of wrapping everything up in, in one nice slide. So if you get nothing else, uh, go ahead and just look at this. This is how you shift from your standard graph of y equals the square root of x. Remember, your starting point is hk, which we already talked about. You are shifting left and right if h is less than 0. Uh, you're shifting left if h is greater than 0. You're shifting to the right, so you're just moving this graph left, right. Um, if your a value is negative, you're going to have a reflection. That's what we saw here. This graph went down when all of our other graphs went up, and that's because this first value is negative. Um, we can stretch or shrink if a is greater than 1 or less than 1. And then just our vertical shift up or down, moving this up or down, uh, depending on what k is. So if k is positive, this is going to shift up. If k is negative, it'll shift down. And that's how you would do your comparisons to graphs of square root of x, just if we wanted to speak them out. Here we have a shift left 6. We're shifting up 3. We're stretching by 2. By a factor of 2. And then we're also reflecting vertically. This one actually had all those different kinds of uh, transformations. On the homework, you will be asked to compare to the graph of 
uh, the square root of x. I'm just looking for something like that. Shift left six, shift up three. If there's a stretch, there's a stretch. If there's a reflection, say it. So that's all it's going for. Um, I'm more focused on how you can graph it, how well you can graph it, um, but that is a part of the homework that I wanted to touch on. And that'll wrap us up for 11.1. .1.